since it's a new year, we're all feeling refreshed. Mm -hmm. I want you to kind of explain a little bit about your background here. We call you the dating expert. In some <laughs> episodes, we don't go into it at all because we're kind of focused on our listeners here, and we always are going to be. But I wanted to give everybody a little bit of a heads up. Maybe they're hearing us for the first time. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about your background, how you got into this whole dating thing, sure. and then we'll get into James's question. Sure. So my background as a coach is going to be very similar to most coaches out there. Most coaches have a very unique experience that they're able to bring to the table and they're able to pass on those lessons that they've learned. Maybe they've gotten uh, coaching themselves, but ultimately like myself, we have this experience that we want to pass on to other people and show how to navigate that particular um, realm as best as possible. And what I did when I was becoming a coach, I was so convicted on making sure that people who were single, who were maybe going through divorce, that they didn't have to go through that alone, that they actually had somebody they can turn to, somebody that had answers, someone that could provide guidance in real time, and not just some some fluff advice, but like real world, modern day dating solutions. And so I dedicated myself on understanding as much as I possibly could, um, the psychology that goes into the dating, interpersonal relationship dynamics, uh, modern dating issues such as dating apps, social media, too many options, being ghosted. And these are just like very, very easy topics, but mm -hmm. some of the deeper ones that um, we've actually talked about on this show, like I just wanted to make sure I was able to be a guiding light when people didn't have answers for what in the, in the moment feel like hopeless situations. So that is what motivates me every single day to show up for everybody and be the best example of how to have ha happy, healthy relationships. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you do a great job with the advice, and that's why we have you on each and every week. And for people out there that are looking for more information, brockolson.com is a great place to start, of course. You can follow Brock on social media, and I know that you have a singles network that you work with mm -hmm. and doing all types of matchmaking and uh, feed dating nights and, and so much more. So brockolson.com, follow Brock for details on all of that. And I think what you've said, you've over 100 people, if, if not plus now, get found marriage through you. Yes, they have. Which is yes, pretty cool. Have. You it, should wear that is. with pride. It is. I do. I do. I actually posted about that just uh, just the other day. So yeah, find fantastic. me on Instagram. <laughs> so that's why we have Brock on. He's not just some guy in here just spitting out of his <laughs> mouth, seeing what, what he can come up with. Uh, Brock is the dating expert in Chattanooga and beyond. So make sure you check that out, brockolson.com. All right, let's get into James's question here. I think this is a good one to kick us off for 2024. I do too. Let's rock and roll. He says, hey, Brock, so here's the thing. What does a guy do when his girlfriend has zero interest in fashion and it's becoming a bit of a challenge? I've tried to nonchalantly suggest checking out fashion magazines or consulting with friends for style ideas, but she's just not into it anymore. She used to dress up nice all the time, but now she's just wearing oversized clothing and leggings. I want to help her feel more confident and stylish, but I'm not sure how to approach this without making her feel uncomfortable or pressured. I love her no matter what, but I think if she dresses up once in a while, she'll feel better. Any advice on how to encourage her to explore fashion a bit more without pushing too hard? He says, thanks for the insight and happy new year. And again, that was James. All right, James. Thank you so much for writing this in. Uh, something that I do before I come onto the show, because uh, Gino gives these to me the day before, and I usually share them on my social media, or sometimes I even talk to my wife, like, <laughs> hey, Diana, listen to this. So yeah. she heard this and she had her opinion on it. And it, it's interesting the way that she, she read this, which was that it's not so much she doesn't, like she's not interested in fashion anymore. She thought that maybe she's just not motivated to continue the effort required to be up to date on fashion. Yeah. I was like, that's a very interesting thing because I thought the same, but I was going to push it a little bit more into a different direction, which is, and we do this sometimes, we get into a relationship and a lot of the effort that we put into getting somebody, we often slack off to keep them. So what I'm going to do after the music break, I'm going to give you a couple of conversational tips on how to talk with your girlfriend. And this is for, for ladies out there that have guys who are slacking too. Sure. Like I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips on how to broach the subject, make sure that your partner's continuing to put consistent effort into keeping you, not just get you. Yeah. You know, we all start the relationship with a significant amount of effort. Like we're trying our best to be on our best behavior. We're trying to be you know, consistent in our actions. Maybe James, maybe you were buying flowers for her every week. Now, maybe you're not ladies. Maybe you were, you know, putting your full face of makeup on every day. Now, maybe you're not. I think it's really important that 
we are able to communicate what our standards are of our partner. And sometimes situations like this, James, you find yourself in a relationship where you said, and you said this, you love your partner no matter what. That's beautiful. So it's not like she's in jeopardy for not dressing up all the time. However, what does become something that jeopardizes the relationship, the relationship is they're just not being effort. And it's really important that if this is a somewhat early relationship and she's already declining in the effort, imagine what it's going to be like two, three years from now. It's really, really, really important, everybody, that you are confident in expressing what you need from your partner. And that sounds like saying, you know, the effort that you put in when we were first dating where, you know, you were putting on your your dresses and you were trying to be like your most attractive, most confident self, like, I love that. Like, that got me hooked. And I'm kind of curious why you're not putting that same effort in anymore. I love you regardless. I love you regardless of how you look, but I am noticing just a little bit of a switch up in the overall effort. Is there something I'm doing that has you not as motivated? I understand we all get comfortable sometimes, but something that's really important to me is that I see my partner trying because I am trying. And it says James in this that he's trying, he dresses up, but there was something that he said, which was, I put out magazines. Yeah. I try to do the subliminal, the the nonchalantly, like (laughs) that's very passive. And that shows that the relationship hasn't had the, uh, the foundation created where you're able to have that confident and open communication where you're James, you're able to say something that I really love is, you know, when you wear that, that red dress, that, that just does something for me. I'd, I'd like to see you do that more often. Like that really means a lot to me. That shows me that you're putting in that effort. And ladies, you can do the exact same thing. Something that guys stop doing, you know, is like I just I mentioned the flowers. Like if flowers is re- are really important to you, seeing that that gesture, the act of uh, act of kindness, that consistency, saying that you know flowers make you really feel special. They make you feel considered, and you love receiving flowers. That's how you do it. You don't just say, oh. Becky's boyfriend keeps buying her flowers. You don't just, you don't do (laughs) stuff like, like that's not going to motivate him. But when you're able to confidently communicate what makes you happy in the relationship, what makes you feel considered and seen and loved, and you talk about why it's important and you can adequately articulate why that's important. Not just saying, you know, I, I want my girlfriend looking hot all the time. Obviously that sounds super shallow, but if you're, if what's really important is that you're seeing your partner continue to put effort and invest into the relationship and not get too comfortable, you are going to have a very happy, long relationship because we all do get a little bit comfortable at times. I get comfortable in my relationship. I'm a dating expert. I still do it. Sure. My wife does it on occasion. Guess what? We call each other out. And, it, and that doesn't jeopardize the relationship at all. Even though we're married, like regardless of that, when we were dating, like we hold each other accountable for maintaining the standards that we require in the relationship. We are confident in expressing that. And that is one of the telltale signs that a relationship is going to have longevity is whether or not you're able to have those difficult conversations. But you having your standards, you having requirements of your partner is well within your right. And you need to be confident in being able to express that. So if you need any, if there, if anybody is out there and they're struggling to find words and the, and, and the, the energy to bring to a, a difficult conversation that's like this, where you feel that the investment and the consistency from your partner is kind of slacking off, you can always reach out to me. But right. what I'm saying here is, you know, find exactly what it is that means so much. Again, if it's flowers, it's not necessarily about the flowers, and guys don't often understand that. It's it's the act, it's the consideration, it's uh, the the intention behind it. And ladies, when you're showing up in your most attractive self men feel really good about you and themselves because you are a direct representation of them. And if you're able to communicate that, like most relationships are going to be in pretty good standing. Just like the previous years we've done this, 
Open line of communication. Open lines of communication. <laughs> that's that's the, always that's consistent, right? Yeah, there. <laughs> it's very consistent, very key. Thank you so much, Brock, and thank you to James for writing. And of course, we wish you the best of luck with that. And you can always go to brockolson.com for more details on all types of stuff like mm-hmm. that. Uh, for those of you listening out there that would like to ask Brock a question yourself, set up a, set us up with a dating scenario or whatever the case may be, send an email. That's Gino G I N O at wdodradio.com. You can be as anonymous as you'd like. By the way, I want to keep that out there. We don't have to, you don't have to even give a first name if you do not choose to, but send that email, get us in here, and we'll do our best to uh, to answer it right here mm-hmm. on the air. And again, brockolson.com for details on everything that Brock does. Brock, thanks so much. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, Gino. Thank you.